the Chicago Cubs director of morale. It's our pal Fred. You need to follow him on Twitter at Dom underscore Frederick. You will be glad you did. Dom, good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing? It's great to be here. And finally, we have some good news to talk about. How about 2021 bringing in some good news? So it's great. Dude, everybody seems very, very up on this decision, which is something the Cubs are not used to. Uh, a lot of unanimity in supporting this. Yeah, absolutely. I had so many people reach out to me yesterday regarding this move, people that I haven't talked to in a while, that know who personally that said, straight up, he's awesome. And um, you don't see that a lot with uh, some of these hires at times. You could have a guy who's coming from, whether it be an L.A. market or somewhere over on the East Coast that you aren't really familiar with, considering when Len was hired back in the early 2000s, a lot of Cubs fans didn't know who he was. Right now, I think everyone's pretty um, clear about what Boo can bring on a daily basis, what kind of broadcaster he is, the humor he has, the knowledge he has about the game. Obviously, we've watched him on the national broadcast with ESPN, him doing radio. And honestly, I think it's a home run hire. I said it before. Um, I was hoping for the Cubs to take a direction that was a little outside the box. Um, because honestly, I didn't, I, I didn't think they could get a guy like Boo. Maybe I'm just understating the job in and of itself, or I wasn't doing the research that I should have. But it's an absolute, it's an absolute home run hire, and the fact that there are so many guys in the business who are saying this is absolutely phenomenal for you all. Uh, people even texting me like morale is really high right now for people that you know aren't uh, in the day to day works of morale um, was awesome, and I I'm super excited about it. Yeah, uh, it, it it seems like. The, the Chris Myers, when when that rumor was going around, it seemed like that was going to move t more towards uh, the suit and tie aspect of Marquee Network, and they were moving farther or further and further away uh, from uh, shirtless Harry in in the bleachers. It, did somebody in the Cubs organization or the Marquee Network did they kind of hear uh, the disgruntledness of the Cub fandom that it was going more corporate, or uh, uh, do you know anything about the the machinations behind the scenes there? You know, that's a great point. I will say that not to out anyone at Marquee, but they are they are great. They, um, a lot of them do follow me, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I'm the, I'm the person uh, to, uh, you know, say cause this change. But um, I, they, they really do interact, and they do pay attention to what's going on with the fans. They do have their uh, boots on the ground, if you will. So potentially, absolutely, I mean, um, there was obviously a bunch of blowback when the Len and JD had the suits on. And like you said, it became more corporate country club, this East Coast vibe that is not Wrigley Field. It's not Wrigleyville. It's not Lakeview, Roscoe Village. It's not that. And um, I, I said this before, there are so many Cubs fans that live and die by this team, better fans than I am, who want to be in Wrigleyville their whole life because it means that much to them. And they will you know, spend whatever last dollar they have on season tickets so they can just be around the ballpark. Um, and I think when you become, like you said, a little bit too corporate, you try to make it this uh, more high-end deal or a national broadcast, it really can turn some fans off. And I think this is a move in the total opposite direction uh, for the best because I think Boog is a guy who can connect with the fans. You Just watching him in his not in, in, his, in his broadcast, his interviews, he's just a down-to-earth guy. That's, who I, that's what I've heard from, from people that have actually interacted with him. So this is, again, an incredible hire. It's an A-plus hire. As soon as I heard it, I was like, wow, that's absolutely phenomenal. Um, but I think, to your point, I, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction uh, where it's less corporate and more of that Wrigley, Harry Carey vibe. Is it sacrilege to say this might be an improvement over Len Casper? Well, I've been thinking about that, and I haven't tweeted it because I don't want to get you know canceled by Cubs Twitter, but and I, and I, I, and I say, say I see that as somebody who for me, Boog fits my wavelength a little bit more than Len did, and that's just I'm not saying anything bad about Len, but I think personally for me, Boog's a former college baseball player. He's a guy that is, I mean, I, I don't want to say it this way, but he's more of just like that that dugout guy, that guy that's been in the locker room that understands the lingo. Not saying Len, Len didn't. Obviously, he's a professional who's had a great uh, broadcasting career. But Boog is just more of a guy who, 
um, can relate to the player on a personal level. And you saw that with him sharing a booth with David Ross. You saw the Chipper Jones video yesterday. Not to sell Len short, but we didn't see any of those experiences while Len was here with the Chicago Cubs. None of those stories like Boog told yesterday. I mean, there's clips going around the Internet yesterday, whether it be the Harry Carey story or the Chipper Jones story or the clip you just showed with uh, Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant. There's so many more opportunities there um, for Boog to really show his personality and and connect with the fans where Len didn't necessarily do that to that extent during his time with the Chicago Cubs. I think you made a good point, too, uh, as far as uh, uh, Boog goes. Uh, people have had a chance to hear him before. If you uh, watch any of the uh, Sunday Night Baseball, you, you sit in, seeing him sitting in with Ross and, and those other guys, you, you got a chance to experience him, whereas Len, unless you were what, at that point, what, a Florida Marlins guy? Um, you mm-hmm. didn't know him from Adam. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's so big. It, they've really found a way to kind of move in the right direction, but also have the uh, presence and the reputation follow along into this job. And I think where Boo can really make this his own deal. And I think he can create a, a totally new um, relationship with JD, something that Cubs fans haven't seen before. So again, I think Cubs fans should be so, so happy for it. And, I, I think a lot of people who are saying, you know, when I tweeted out yesterday that big news was coming right before the announcement came out, a lot of fans were thinking it would be an extension or it maybe was another trade. But when you're talking about a new play-by-play uh, broadcasting hire, that is so huge because there's so many fans out there, especially with the Cubs having such a large fan base, of people who don't have the means to make it to a Cubs game, that don't, have, that don't live in this area but are diehard Cubs fans, that broadcaster becomes synonymous with your fan experience really much, pretty much through your whole life. Um, and that's why yesterday's news was so big. It's why Cubs fans are so excited, and they just inevitably should be because uh, it's a great hire, and I think it's going to go really well. That's a great point about uh, you know uh, people not being able to get to the park. You know, we're out here in Rockford, uh, pretty far from Wrigley. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a that's a whole trip if you if you want to go to a Cubs game. So you're absolutely right. The, the the TV broadcast, the radio broadcast too. It's your it's your summer companion, and I can't think of a guy I'd like to spend a summer with more than like Boog Skiambi. Yeah, absolutely. His name's Boog, and that, that's pretty much all you all you have to say. His name's Boog, and he's just a you know stand up, honest, funny guy. And what more do you want? Especially when the guy knows baseball and he's great at speaking. So again, I'm I'm super jacked up for it. And spring training, depending on how the pandemic goes, is coming right around the corner. There was a update yesterday that players are preparing to go back to spring training on time. So. Uh, A lot of good news coming out of yesterday. For those who are just joining us, we're spending some time with the director of morale for the Chicago Cubs, Dom, our friend Fred. uh, Dom underscore Frederick is how you follow him at Twitter, and I I would recommend it highly because there's a lot of great stuff up there. To give you an indicator of the effect that you have on our lives, um, the other day when the the Darvish news broke, my first thought, my my very first thought was, (laughs) man, I hope Fred's okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, um, well, it, you know, that, 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 was a, that was an interesting day. I learned early on from one of my people who is in the know that one, one of my sources, he was like, listen, this is going to go down. You just need to prepare for it. Mm-hmm. And I was getting updates throughout the day about what potential uh, trades could look like with you, but I was pretty much prepared for bad news to be leaving Chicago. Um in terms of the deal, listen, from what I heard, and I know a lot of national uh, analysts tweeted this out as well, the market was not as great as we potentially all think it should have been because, again, use 35, uh, he has a larger contract, he has the injury history, he has potential you know, uh, issues with going from team to team. We saw that here in Chicago early on in his Cubs career. And that's why the uh, market is was what it was. And the fact that, and this is the reality of it, the Padres were the only team that were willing to take on the money. Everyone else said, okay, if you want to trade for you, then you're going to have to give up. Then you're going to have to pay, you know, potentially half, 75% of this deal. Uh, and you can maybe get one of our top prospects back. I think Jed said, well, we don't want to pay 30 to $40 million for a prospect right now, uh, which is understandable. 
Um, so they ended up going with the quantity over quality play. I don't hate it. The more I've thought about it, I understand this move in and of, uh, to, to the fullest. And the fact that they are getting the salary relief gives them the opportunity to uh, potentially add on in different ways throughout the lineup. And again, I know we've talked about this before. It's not like this division's going anywhere. It's not like this division's passing us up. The Cardinals aren't going to do anything. The Brewers are selling subway tickets. Uh, the Reds are literally just lost power, and the Pirates are terrible. So it's not like the Cubs are totally out of the NL Central. I know that might not mean a lot to some fans, but the reality of it is, is you could still trade bad news, um, and you're still at the top of this division because of how it looks. And if that's the case, and you potentially don't have as good of a team in 2021, but you can rebound for 2022, so on and so forth, you can replenish the farm system, use getting older. I hope he does absolutely phenomenal in San Diego. I understand the move, and I'm still looking forward to what Jay can do as uh, team president right now, the guy who is solely making the shots because we don't have a GM. That's uh, that's some great emotional bargaining uh, you work through there that uh, I, th- I think is helping me out too. Um, so, so there's a so there's basically five, and I'm leaving your guy Ian out of this because I think he's he, he's solid. I don't think he's going anywhere. But there's basically five core guys left. Uh, you got you got Hendricks, uh, you got Contreras, you got uh, Bryant, you got Baez, and you have Rizzo. Uh, how many of those five do you think are still going to be on the team next year? Oh, man, that's a great question because now we're in January, and as I said before, spring training is coming up closer and closer. I think for sure you're going to see three, and I think the two guys who are potentially getting moved, you probably all know the names. I think it's Chris because of the contract, because of the lack of you know being able to sign an extension, come to an agreement, Scott Boris, so on and so forth. And then finally, the guy who can probably bring the biggest return of all of them it's going to be Willie. Uh, now, I'm not saying they're going to get traded, but I think if you're looking at two guys that have the potential to leave and bring a substantial return with them, it's Chris and Willie. So we'll see. Um, I do agree that there are those core five guys. Ian could make it six. I don't think Ian's going anywhere um, as of right now. But we'll see. I mean, I know Jed's working hard. Um, it, it's, a, it, it's a tough spot to be in right now, but... The reality of it is it's, it's the, the market has become depreciated in a sense because there's uh, less money for teams to use. That means the currency of prospects are increasing, and the fact that these teams don't want to give away their top prospects really puts Jed uh, – in a tough bind right now because they can't, he can't go to, you know, whether it be the Dodgers or someone else and say, Hey, give us your top prospect or Wilson Contreras. And they're going to say no, because, uh, you know, these guys are one of our most valuable assets in and of itself because we don't have the money to make all these big deals. And that goes throughout the MLB. So it's a tough spot to be in. We'll see what happens, but I could definitely see two more guys leave. And like I said before, I'm not going to be jumping up and down if those moves are made, but I'm going to understand the fact that those moves were made because some change has to come around sooner or later because of how the uh, end of uh, August, September, and October has gone throughout the past three seasons. Um, we're almost running out of time here, Fred, but I did want to get to another sport here with you. And I, I saw you correcting a lot of a Bears fans' attitudes uh, on Twitter the other day. Um, give give some Bears fans a, a sliver of hope uh, heading into a playoff game on Sunday. Well, here's the reality of it, guys: is the fact that this fan base, and again, I'm the director of the I'm the director of morale for the Chicago Cubs. I don't have time to be telling people to be fired up about an NFL playoff. Uh, appearance. It's absolutely ridiculous that we couldn't have people check their egos at the door and just rally uh, rally behind Mitch one time. We know he's out the door. We know he's not the saver. We understand it. But the fact that we can't rally behind this guy, a good guy, uh, a guy who's a leader, whatever you want to call it, just one time against the Packers. The fact that we couldn't do that really, really frustrated me, and I, I didn't understand it at all. Listen, NFL playoff experiences should be sacred. They should be cherished. And the opportunity that you have uh, to play the Saints next week when you could have one injury and then you're in the driver's seat in the game should not be understated. It's the NFL any given Sunday, right? You want to talk about the, you want to talk about being a Bears fan? You should be preaching uh, any given Sunday all the time. So the fact that we couldn't rally behind Mitch 
um, on Sunday is pretty disheartening. I hope that changes for the NFL playoffs. Considering it's the NFL playoffs, totally ridiculous. I'm in on Mitch. It doesn't mean I think he's a savior. That doesn't mean I necessarily think the Bears are going in the right direction. But let's rally behind the guy. Let's see what happens. You never know any given Sunday. And uh, bear down. Bears in four. This is why he is the director of morale for the Chicago Cubs. And, you know, we're kind of dubbing him as the director of morale for all Chicago sports. We all need you. When you have that, that period where you're, you're, you're down and you need someone to lift you up, this is the guy. Yeah. Follow him on Twitter, at Dom underscore Frederick. You will be glad you did. Dom, thanks for the time, as always. We look forward to getting together with you again real soon. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. It's always, it's always a lot of fun. Thanks again. You bet.